what is covalent bond covalent bond is actually it is a formed by uh, mutual sharing of one or more electron space between two atoms so that each atom involved in bonding at least attains uh, the next noble gas configuration in order to get stability so let us see through this examples so there is two atoms one is a atom one is b atom so they have valence electrons each have valence electron so these two electrons will come together and make a form a bond so this bond is called as covalent bond okay so let us see types of covalent bond so uh, types means there are two types one is single covalent bond and second is a multiple covalent bond so in single covalent bond there will be one pair sharing of one pair of electron between two atoms so let us see this examples of hydrogen so hydrogen have each uh, hydrogen have uh, each will uh, share one electron between uh, them so this is a single covalent bond similarly in chlorine uh, there is sharing of one uh, so one pair of electron between them so it is your uh, single covalent bond similarly in uh, water molecules uh, one electron for this atom share with this hydrogen one electron for this oxygen share with this hydrogen so again this is a single covalent single covalent but in double uh, two pair of electron is shared by uh, one atoms together with other atoms so you can see this example of oxygen so oxygen oxygen two electrons is shared between two oxygen this is sharing two electron with this oxygen this is saying two electron with this oxygen so there will be two uh, bond between them triple bond means three electron pair is shared between two atoms so nitrogen sharing three electron between this nitrogen and this also sharing three electrons there will be three so each bond will constitute two electrons in them now next is covalency so what is covalency covalency is number of electrons uh, contributed by one atoms of it in a shared or linking electron number of electrons so if one atom saying whatever electrons call is uh, covalency so here you see uh, in chlorine they are sharing one electron shared by this chlorine and one electron shared by this chlorine so covalency of this chlorine will be one in this case uh, ch4 uh, carbon is contributing four electrons one for this atom one for this atom one for this atom one for this atom so there is four at uh, electron is shared by one carbon atom so covalency of carbon will be one but covalency of hydrogen will be one because one is uh, hydrogen sharing each hydrogen sharing only one electron so here covalency for hydrogen is one for carbon four now come to water so one atom is sharing how many electrons so for each hydrogen uh, one oxygen sharing two electrons so for one electron this hydrogen and one electron this hydrogen so covalency of oxygen in this case is two and for hydrogen is one but in case of nitrogen here covalency will be three similar fashion now see variable well covalency so what is variable covalency means covalency is not fixed it is fixed means one to it can be more than one more than two but it is restricted to some of the element due to presence of some of the regions so what are those regions uh, those regions is, i am giving one regions uh, they have vacant d orbitals so they have d orbital but d orbit is empty due to the presence of empty d orbitals they can make the they have covalency more than one so we can see here uh, in case of example phosphorus sulfur and chlorine let us take the uh, electronic configuration phosphor it is 285 so we can write in terms of configuration 3s neon 3s2 3p3 and they have 3d0 also because third orbit is there so d orbital must present in between in them but it is vacant it is vacant so this phosphorus can this two electron can go to this d orbitals and make bond so three here one electron here one electron here so maximum covalency of the phosphorus can be five similarly sulfur so configuration is 2s6 so neon 3s2 3p4 and they have vacant d orbitals okay so here one electron from s can go to d like this one uh, 3s1 3p this one 3p3 and 3d1 3d1 two electron is there so from 3 3d not Two, you can write it. 3d2. So 3 plus 1 plus 2, 6. So it can make covalency maximum covalency 6 due to presence of these orbitals because d can accommodate maximum five electrons, five five unpaired electrons. So maximum covalency will be 6. In case of 7, so one electron here and p contains two more electrons. So two can be shifted here, one can be shifted here. 2 plus 1, 3. So it can make maximum covalency seven electrons like this. nitrogen 25 helium 2s2 2p3 so here no because two orbitals do not contain d so they have do not have a uh, d orbital so maximum covalency of nitrogen will be uh, not 3 actually they have the 3 means 3 uh, unpaired electron means 3 but this electron also involved in bonding so 3 plus 1 maximum covalency for the nitrogen is 3 plus 1 4 
थ्री फॉर दिस थ्री पी एंड वन इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन बॉन्डिंग सिमिलरली फॉर ऑक्सीजन हेयर थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन इज देयर ओके एंड वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज सेट बाय द दिस ऑक्सीजन सो मैक्सिमम कोवलेंसी ऑफ द दिस ऑक्सीजन इज हाउ मच थ्री वील सी मोर एग्जाम्पल्स इन अदर स्टेजेस वील सी दैट दिस वन हाउ कोवलेंसी ऑफ द ऑक्सीजन इज थ्री Let us take uh, some more examples for this one: phosphorus and sulfur. So, in phosphorus, we have compound PCl3. Three means covalency of three. PCl5 covalency of phosphorus is five. For sulfur, you can see here SCl2 covalency uh, for sulfur is two. So here it is four, then covalency four. SF6 here six, then it is six. It's called hexavalent. For halogens. Uh, except fluorine, like chlorine, bromine three. So we can see example ICL. So here covalency of Cl is one. For here iodine covalency will be three. This is five covalency of iodine is five. A seven covalency means iodine surrounded by seven fluorine atoms. Now we can see what see we can see the property of covalent compounds. So property covalent compound is uh, as gases or liquid. They are present as gases or liquid. So their force of attraction between adjacent covalent molecules are weak due to which they are Having gases and liquid conditions, they have low boiling point and melting point. Then any compounds, they are bad conduct to electricity because they not they do not give free ions like graphite, HCl etc. HCl can give free ions, but this is the exceptions. Insoluble in polar solvent, but soluble in non-polar solvent. Non-polar solvent means organic solvent like urea. So it follow it follows the principle like like dissolves like means any compound will dissolve in polar solvent. Uh, covalent compound will dissolve in non-polar solvent. They are neither hard uh, nor brittle. Why it is not brittle? Because it uh, poses uh, weak forces uh, between the molecules in solid crystal states. So, crystal state is crystal state is lattice is there, but again the force of force of attraction is very weak. They have rigid and directional. So they have directional bond between two atoms. Unlike ionic molecules, which have non-directional bond due to the ionic condition that we have seen in Previous lecture notes. Now let us see octet rule. In octet rule, we can see according to this rule, an atom has a tendency to occupy eight electrons. Uh, two in hydrogen and helium. This is an exception in its valence cell, which is a stable arrangement. But a number of molecules are known in which either octet is not complete or there are more than eight electrons. So this we will study later on. First we will see how what is octet rule and how to understand this concept. So. First, uh, we understand this uh, through a Lewis is a name of scientist who uh, try to uh, explain why molecules are stable, why they have eight electrons in their valence electron during stability. So this is the main condition for the molecules to become stable. So electron dot symbols for this structure uh, for nitrogen take the valence electron. They have five electrons. Write dot five dots for oxygen, six dots for chlorine, seven dots, and for lithium one dots. So uh, if, if you take the molecules. Uh, stable molecule like oxygen. So how they can form dot structure? How they are stable molecules? So they have eight electrons in their valence cell. So oxygen is six electron that we have seen. So it requires two more electrons to become eight. So it will share two electrons. Similarly, this oxygen will share two electrons from other oxygen. So these two electrons will be shared between them. So we can see through this uh, uh, diagram. Figures are two bond is shared and these are uh, these two are non-bonding electrons. Similarly, for nitrogen, we can see here uh, it requires uh, it has five electrons in the valence cell. It requires three electrons more electrons from other nitrogen to make triple bond. So nitrogen have three bonds between them and two bonds are unpaired. So it has three bond pair to lone pair. So there is another formula to understand the, how many bonds in and and molecules can form maximum bonds can form. So this we understand through this formula. Uh, Number of bonds by an atom or central atom. So this is atom, or this can be central atom. What what will be the number of atoms? So first we have to take total number of assume octet electron by each atom. So each atom means nitrogen, nitrogen. So what is the octet electrons present by each atom? So uh, for each atom, uh, nitrogen they can have eight electrons octet during octet conditions. This also have eight electrons and minus total number of valence electrons. So You have to subtract their valence electron from the valence electron. They have five. They also have five. So we have written here formula like this one: okay, eight into for this oxygen. So each oxygen have eight electron, one atom, eight electron, one atom, eight electron. So this is your total number of octet electrons minus uh, one electron each one atom, six electron, one atom, six electrons. Now add it. This for one oxygen. This for one oxygen. Okay. 
so okay oxygen 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 then you have subtracted by 2 so this is your 16 6 into 1 6 into 1 so this is 12 16 minus 12 2 so 4 by 2 2 bonds so between two atoms two bonds can be formed now we can see for nitrogen so n2 molecules so each nitrogen have eight electron eight electrons this is the octet minus this is valence electron by one atom valence electron by one atom so add it 16 minus uh, 10 divided by 2 so we will get 6 by 3 3 bonds so number of bonds between the molecules is 3 similarly we can see some other structures like h2 how we can draw it the lewis structures so oxygen is the central atom so oxygen central atom oxygen has six electrons so each electron shared by the hydrogen is two so we can see the diagram they have two bond pair two lone pair similarly we can see here methane gas ch4 carbon is central they have less number of uh, atoms so carbon is central so uh, it has four valence electron so one electron is shared by the each hydrogen so here carbon has eight electrons this is two electron two electron two electrons and two electrons because two electrons so bond will be two 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 so there is four bond pair but zero lone pair in pcl3 we can see here phosphorus central atom so here uh, P phosphorus five electrons so one two three they have given for each chlorine so each chlorine getting eight electron eight electron eight electron so one lone pair remains so we can see here free diagram so three bond pair but lone pair is 3 for each chlorine 3 into 3 9 plus 1 10 so they have 10 lone pair and 3 bond pair so we can try you can try for the other molecules like h2co3 carbon central atom nh3 nitrogen central atom carbon dioxide carbon central atom hcn here carbon is the central atom between hydrogen and nitrogen now leaves dot structure of some molecules so molecules which contain ionic bond only so how we can draw these structure for ionic bond molecules for so nhcl so Na they can lose one electron so it becomes N plus so it will give one electron to Cl so Cl is one minus so you can see seven these structures are for chlorine so they got one electron from the sodium so seven is the electron for chlorine one from the uh, sodium so it will possess minus structure so we can see here uh, in free Na plus Cl minus so this is cation this is anion similarly for magnesium oxide so magnesium can lose two electrons two electrons given to oxygen so oxygen also have eight electrons they also have eight electrons so it is two negative charge two positive charge see so aluminium fluoride so aluminium contains it can lose three electrons so it will give three electrons to each electron to each fluorine so each fluorine will get this is get one electron one electron this electron this electron this is from the aluminium so this will pose three charges and this will pose three negative charges so this is the uh, diagram so we cannot put like bond this is the force of attraction the force of attraction is nothing but the lines of atom that we have seen it calcium hydride calcium two pole uh, two pole plus and each hydrogen getting one more electron from the calcium so we can write like this so this is the way of writing for any compound square brackets molecules which do not allow uh, follow octet rules so in electron balance compound like lithium uh, plus beryllium 2 plus they do not follow octet rule why because they have one electron so they will make a uh, two electron valence cell in the valence cell uh, gallium 3 plus copper plus ag plus zinc plus etc they have 80 electron in their valence cell after losing it so in this cases octet rule is not followed so this is one exception in covalent compounds the, again problem is there uh, some molecules have odd odd number of electrons like clo2 no no2 so if you see there so let, let us take an example of nit nitric oxide so nitrogen have seven electrons and oxygen have eight electrons eight plus seven five so here again problem occurs bonding will not be formed uh, total electrons will be 15 for no2 nitrogen have five electrons it's two electrons so there are seven electrons seven, 17 electrons Similarly, chlorine is uh, Cl or O2, so they have Cl has 17 electrons, oxygen has 16 electrons, so totally 33 electrons. So complete pairing of these electrons is impossible. So pairing not possible. 33 electrons means uh, someone will pair, but 33 means someone will be unpaired electrons. So this type of H molecules is called as odd number of electron molecules. It is not possible in other cases. They have even number of electrons in other molecules. Now one more case is incomplete octet. So here we can see uh, beryllium chloride. So beryllium is a central atom. So it has two electrons. So it can take two electrons. It can share with the two electrons with other compound Cl. So Cl will take one electron, one electron. So beryllium that. So this is a covalent compound. Beryllium is a metal. This is a metalloid. So it is can form covalent compound due to its small size. 
chlorine chlorine similarly bf3 so boron it is sharing three electrons it has three electrons in the valence cell so it can give it can share with the three electrons with the fluorine so it has total electrons six electrons unlike beryllium they have four electrons so six electrons so we can see the free diagram fluorine have eight electrons eight electrons eight electrons the total bond pair is three three is the bond pair and but the lone pair will be uh, three for each electron three into three nine so nine will be your lone pair expanded octet it means uh, more than octet so they have more than 8 8 electrons so this is this type of molecule is called as super octet molecules you can see pcl5 so phosphorus have five electrons so 5 cl is there so 5 cl means 5 into 2 10 electrons so this phosphorus have 10 electrons present in them and each cl have 8 8 8 electrons so oh, chlorine not uh, violating the octet rule but phosphorus is violating the octet rule Similarly, for sulfur uh, fluoride, so here, here we can see sulfur has six fluorine. So sulfur will share with the uh, all electrons of the sulfur will share with the six fluorine. So sulfur contains uh, two into six, twelve electrons. How many bonds? Six bonds. Each bond consists of two electrons. There are twelve electrons. Similarly, you can practice for the ICL three, IF seven, PCL five like this. PCL five we have seen it. ICL three, IF seven. and we can draw some more uh, different type of structure from these molecules like uh, h2so4 here sulfur is the mineral molecule so they can make six bonds 1 2 3 4 so you can see oxygen oxygen one oxygen this side oxygen oxygen this side hydrogen hydrogen in h3po4 phosphorus is the central atom so phosphorus can make five bonds so here we can draw first you draw with the one one bonds then you have to adjust uh, molecules so phosphorus one oxygen one oxygen so we can say phosphorus make five bonds but hydrogen can make uh, so two bonds oxygen can make three bonds so here one lone pair one lone pair in h3po4 phosphorus is the central atom okay so again it is first surrounded by the all oxygen so here i have three three oxygen is there so one oxygen two oxygen and three oxygen One, two, and three. So there is no need of drawing this one diagram. So here one oxygen. Cut it this one. One oxygen, one oxygen, oxygen. So here is uh, so one, two, and here it will be attached with the hydrogen. So there are three hydrogen, three oxygen. In this case here S three PO four. You can see as so of oxygen again. I have four uh, four uh, phosphorus. I have four oxygen. So phosphorus first. And so first you draw with the single single bond. So oxygen can make two bond. Here oxygen can make two bond. So hydrogen can make only one bond. So This structure is possible. In this case, H four P two O seven. Here you have to think it. O seven means phosphorus is central atom. So phosphorus will make sound by the all oxygens, all oxygens. So oxygen is comes between phosphorus and this phosphorus. Uh, this molecule is somewhat symmetrical. Just like if you draw one line line here, so you can see here. So this is the mirror image of this one in this way. So this is symmetrical. Okay, and this is the structure of H four P two O seven. So there are some molecules which are both ionic and covalent molecules, like KCM. So K plus charge, CM is minus charge. So carbon and nitrogen. So carbon nitrogen, we can see that three bonds are there. Carbon can make three bonds with the nitrogen. Nitrogen also make three bonds. So they have one negative charge. So this is a ionic bond, but this is the covalent bond. Similarly, sodium hydroxide between sodium and OH, there is the ionic bond, but between OH there is a covalent bond. Similarly, calcium carbonate between calcium and carbonate there is a ionic bond, but between the carbonate in between carbonate there is a covalent bond. So this is the example of both ionic and covalent bond.